Infinity.com. Today I'm going to show you how to format a book in Microsoft Word. Um, I have some other videos where I've said that Microsoft Word really isn't great for book formatting, but the advantage is if you figure out how to format in Microsoft Word, you'll be able to make changes easily and you'll be able to format future books, um, which is great because if you use InDesign or you pay someone to format in Adobe InDesign, it's harder for you to make changes yourself later or to figure out. Um, however, if you're only publishing one book, if it has to be done well, it has to be really professional, Adobe InDesign will produce a better quality book for printing. Word can also be okay, um, but it's kind of a pain to figure everything out. So in this video, and probably it'll take more than one video to get through this, I'll start uh, formatting this manuscript that I've got for print. This is Lions Roar by Artemis Crow. Um, I actually made the cover. It looks like this. And so one of the most important things with formatting is that we want the format to match the cover, but without overwhelming it. So I might want to use these fonts and I save the fonts in this folder. This is LHF Larcher and Bebas. I might want to use those fonts for the chapter headings and then I'll pick a very simple serif font for the body text and then I'll set up the margins and the headers and the footers and um, title page and all that stuff. So let's just get started. This is the manuscript. Right now, if I go to page layout, I can see the size and it's still an 8 by 8.5 by 11. This is basically like when you're formatting a book to send to an agent or a publisher, um, then it might look something like this, which is double spaced. She actually chose Garamond for the font, it's Garamond 11. Um, and right now, this manuscript is 100,000, 110,000 words and 381 pages, which is not so bad. You want to keep your book at about 350 to 400 pages. You don't want it too thin so that it looks flimsy like a magazine. You don't want it so thick that um, if it's more than like five or 600 pages, it gets kind of bulky and it eats into your, your profit margin. So I have this book and the first thing we're going to do is change the size. So you've got to change. If you're formatting for print, you have to know what print size you're going to use, you can go to create space if you're using create space and figure out what size you want to use. Um, six by nine is kind of the standard default for print books. So I'm going to do that. I'm just doing custom size six by nine. The other ones might be um, 5.25 by eight if you want it a little bit smaller. Six by nine is a, a pretty decent size, but like I said, you don't want it too flimsy. So if it's going to be like 200 pages, you might want to pick a smaller size so that it has a little bit more pages. But you also don't want to cram everything in so that there's really narrow margins and really tight um, text because you don't want it to be kind of a chore to read. So it's nice to fit as much spacing as you can, but you also don't want to make it look like you're just intentionally padding it out or adding extra pages just by adding more spacing. So I'm going to do this and apply it to the whole document rather than this point forward, whole document, and hit OK. So now, this is formatted for 6 by 9 but because originally she had probably 1 inch margins, which is also what you do when you set up a 8.5 by 11 document for um, sending it to an agent or a publisher, You'll, they'll probably recommend using 1 inch margins. But that's way too much here because there's too much white space. Um, so after I've changed my size, I'll go to margins and she has 1 inch margins and 1.25 by 1.25. Two five. So you're losing like three margins of a six inch page, which is half of your page to margins. It's way too much. I like to have my margins at um, 0.5. So we'll start there. And I'm just going to change. I can actually just copy this. And the thing to consider with your margins is that if I have a heading like this, it's not really going to be affected by the margin. And if I have this heading, um, if my top is 0.5, then the heading is going to have to come up even higher towards the margin. So my top margin might have to be bigger than 0.5. It might have to be like one inch, but we'll come back to that later. Same thing with the bottom. Um, you don't want the page numbers too close to the bottom. And 
if my bottom margin is only 0.5, this, there, this might get too crowded in this area. But for right now, um, that's given me a nice margin on both sides here. The other thing I might want to think about is, I'll go back to page layout and margins. This is what I've selected. But I'm going to go back to custom margins again and check the gutter. The gutter is the space on the inside of each page, the, pa the, sp the side of the page that's in the binding of the book. That binding is going to eat up a little bit of space, so I might want to have a little bit of a gutter, maybe 2.2. You don't want a huge one. Um, but a little bit just pushes everything out a little bit so that the margins look equal on the right and left side, even though some of the space on the inside is actually being eaten by the gutter. So that just makes it so that your text doesn't disappear in the spine. And so I'll set that as well. You won't really notice it, except you can see now how this side is a little bit wider than this side. So I know that this side is going to be inside. And so I'm also going to have to make sure if I have my headings, if they're not centered up here, they need to be on the outside of the pages. So if I add a gutter here, then it's easy to see visually this is the inside. So I need to have the heading over here on the outside of the page. And these are going to rotate um, every page. If I change the setting so I can view it, um, It's kind of hard to see because I only set it at 0.25. Uh, and the gutter position should be left. We'll come back and check it later once we get closer. But um, let's start. So what we're going to want to do right now, almost everything, if we go back to home, everything is in normal. And that's a problem because if I want to make any changes to the text, if I click on normal, everything's going to go back to the default. So I'm going to have to redo everything again. Um, what I want to do instead is have a different style for the first paragraph and then another style for all the other paragraphs. So for most of my body text, it can be normal. But first, I'm going to want to style this. Garamond is OK. Um, it's not my favorite. I would choose Garamond. Premiere Pro or another Premiere font, which is just a little bit nicer. Um, but the reason we're doing this in Word is because I want to make it easy for the author to continue and make changes. So I'm going to leave it at Garamond for now. 11 is OK. It's kind of small, but it's OK. The line spacing is a bit too much. So I want to go here to line spacing in paragraph. And set it two point. So I could go to 1.5. And that might be all right. Um, and then I can just go like this, right click, and go to Styles, Update Normal to Match Selection. And because I'm just starting, this is going to update the whole book to the style, which is 1.5 line spacing. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see it. Um, and that could work, except now the book is 412 pages, which is fine. But once I add the chapter pages, that's going to add a lot more. It might get up to almost 500 pages, and that's a bit much. Um, so there's a couple things I can do. I can either reduce the margins on the sides a little bit, or I can reduce the line spacing a little bit. 1.5 is really a bit much. So I'll start with that, and I'll go back to line spacing again and line spacing options. Instead of 1.5, I'm going to go 1.3, which is a little tighter. You don't want it too tight. I would never do like one point spacing. But I'll try 1.3, and then I'll go Styles, Update Normal. And because it's 11 point font, that's probably OK. I still don't love the normal Garamond. It's not as pretty as some other serif fonts. Um, but now the book. Pages are down to 349, and that's a good length for a book. So I can start there. I can adjust it again later if I need to, um, or I might try to change to a more professional font. Um, there are other body fonts that I like more. Garamond, like Times New Roman, it's just a little bit too plain, a little bit too clunky, and it's just not going to look as nice 
in print as other fonts. And you really need to focus on the reader experience. And so I would probably choose another font. But for now, it's not too bad. Um, let's check this spacing. You don't want to have any tabs here. If you were writing your document and you were hitting the tab key, like hit return and then hit tab to indent every time, we would have to go through and remove all of those tabs before we continued. And the way you would remove something like that, you go to find or find and replace. And the tab is actually, it looks like this. It's that symbol and T. That's a tab mark. And if I want to replace it, I can just replace it with nothing. I can just not type any space or anything in this replace with symbol. And then I'll hit replace all. And there actually was one tab somewhere, so I took it out by using this shortcut. Um, you'd want to remove all the tabs, and if you hadn't already, then you'd want to set the indentation manually. So you'd go up here to line space options, and this is the first line is indented by 0.31. Um, that's probably fine. It's a little bit too much, but it's probably fine for now, so I'll leave it. And what that means is anytime you hit return to get a new paragraph, the first line of the new paragraph is always going to have that same indentation. So when you want to change that for the whole thing, you could go through um, to line space options and change this indentation. But for the first paragraph of every chapter, we don't want that indentation. So what we're going to want to do, this is all normal right now. The first chapter and the second chapter, they're all using the normal paragraph. But I'm, what I'm going to want to do is highlight just this paragraph, go to line space options, and take away this first line indent. So indent by zero. OK. And then I'm going to right click here, go to styles, and save selection as a new quick style. And I'll say first paragraph. So what that means is now I have this first paragraph style and I have this normal style. And the only difference is the first paragraph um, is not indented. So every time I get to a chapter and I set up a new chapter page, I'm going to hit this first paragraph and I'm going to lose the indentation on the first paragraph style. I could also try a few other things. There's some things I can't do. Like for first paragraph, you're going to want either to have a big letter, but if you do that, it's going to screw up the line spacing. So I'm going to set that back. You could add a drop, shot, a drop cap, but you'd have to go to, let's see, insert, drop cap, dropped. I think three is too much. I would probably change it to dropping two lines instead of three. I could do that, but if I do that, even if I update the new style, update first paragraph, that's not going to, it's not going to work. You can't save those drop caps as part of the paragraph style. So I'm going to undo that. Um, and the same thing, if I wanted to make this uppercase, which I like to do with first paragraphs, and I wanted to update that style to match, save, uh, it's not even going to let me do that. It's because you have two different styles here. This is uppercase, this is lowercase. So it's not going to let me save it. If I update, it actually let me update the first few um, of the first few words of that sentence. But if I went to this new paragraph and hit first paragraph, it's not going to keep that. The only style that's saved is the no, no indent. So what that means is every time you have a new chapter, you're going to have to First, click here to lose the indent, and then you're going to have to manually add a drop cap and capitalize that first bit if you want. I'll go ahead and do that on this first one. You can play around with these later, and this is really something you're going to be doing later on. But you want to make those decisions too, because you don't want to try a drop cap and then do it for 30 chapters and then have to go back 
and remove it for 30 chapters. You want to make sure you've figured out what your book is going to look like before you commit to it and do it on all the chapters. What I'll usually do is um, I'll do the first, once I set the basic body text, I'll go through and I'll set different chapter styles for the first three or four paragraphs, just playing around, um, so I can see how it looks. And then once you really make a decision, you can go through all the chapters and finish the formatting. So I have this. I also need to do something with the header. What I need to have is up here, I have um, this is kind of like, this is the chapter heading. I'm just going to set it for heading one right now. And this is kind of like a subtitle. So I might set it for subtitle. And then I can change these styles, and then I can update the style to keep it. But I've got to use the H1 setting, the heading one section setting. I can't just make a new random style because I'm going to want to see, let me see if I can find the page. I'm used to having this view just um, already displayed, but you want to see the table of contents. Well, I might come back to it because um, I don't remember where it is right now. But you're going to have this tab over here, which is a table of contents tab, and it's going to show you all of the chapters. But that only works if you're using the heading one tag that's actually the H1 tag. If I'm using something else, it's not going to show up over here on my table of contents tab. Um, so what we're going to do, though, with the styles, I might style this a little bit. Maybe I want it to be italics. I can choose something a little bit more fancy. I could make it bigger if I want. You don't want to kind of go crazy or make it too distracting. You can also do, if you want to change your line spacing or your kerning, you would go to that little tab here. You would go to Advanced. And instead of spacing normal, you do expanded by however many. You may not want to do that for the subtitle here, but especially for your chapter titles, you're probably going to want to add some spacing. The other thing to notice is that this style for adding one, even though I centered it, I think it's indented a little bit more it's a little bit more to the right-hand side. That's because it has some indenting already. So for this H1, I have to go up here to line space options again and remove this first line indent because I don't want to indent. If I have an indent, the text isn't going to center properly. I want this to center right in the middle of the page so it can't have any indent. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to update the style, update heading one style to match. Um, I might want to make this bigger. I want. I might want to make it all caps. I this font is kind of too chunky. I probably wouldn't use it. Um, it's not so bad if I don't use bold. I might want to do this again if I go here and space it out. It also, it depends kind of what you're going to focus on. You don't want to have really big uh, text for both the chapter and also the subtitle or subtext. So this one could be really, really small. And then I could have this one be a little bit bolder. That's also going to depend on the genre, because some genres will have smaller text with more spacing. Also, um, when you're looking at this first page, I'm going to have to zoom out so I can see it all on my computer. The text on this first page should be halfway down the page. So I'm going to have to hit space a few times because I want this main body text to start halfway down the page. 
And this one also, I think I have to do that um, line spacing and remove the indent because it's not centered properly. So now at least this is centered. It's spread out a little bit too much. I don't love the fonts. I'll probably change the fonts later. But I'm going to go ahead and style update subtitle to match and heading one. I might make that a little bit bigger. These are decisions you're going to have to make and play with. Um, you're going to want to pick a better font. Actually, what I would do if I was formatting this book and this is the cover, the font I used on this book cover is um, LHF Larcher. So I would actually go and find the right font. And that's the one I would use. This might actually be too weird and bold for a chapter title. Um, it is very stylish, but it's probably better in this case if I use this font instead, which is also on the book cover, but just a little bit less flashy and fancy. It's fine. It depends kind of like if this is going to be paranormal romance and appeal to more younger readers, then this kind of flashy font might be OK. I can zoom in to look at it. Um, it might be all right, but it's also a little bit distracting. So I might want to use the other font instead, which is Baybus New. And it looks like that. And that's probably the one that I would choose. And then I might um, space it out a little bit more so it matches the cover. And I'm going to right click, style, update, heading. So what I have basically set up this way now, what it means is I can scroll down to find the next chapter. And you're going to have to do this eventually. Once you've decided on your styles and you've got the styles how you want, then when you scroll down to another chapter, all I have to do is highlight this and click on Heading 1, and highlight this and click on First Paragraph. Oh, sorry, uh, Heading 2, or did I pick Subtitle? I have to remember where it is, this one. Then I would highlight this and pick on first paragraph. The rest of it's fine because I use the basic formatting style. I would have to also keep track of my paragraph returns because I want it about halfway down the page. What I usually do is I'll just highlight I'll put it right in front of the text and I'll highlight all this space. This might be like 10 spaces. Um, I'll just copy that and then I'll paste it into every chapter so that I know I'm spacing the same amount of times. But we're also going to need to add some page breaks before we really get through all this. But that's just to set up the styles. So you want to set up the styles for your main chapters and your subtitle and the first paragraph. The first paragraph, even after you hit first paragraph, if you have anything special, like I usually like to have a few words like this and also change the fonts to something like a serif and then maybe make the first um, the first letter a drop cap, which you would do with insert drop cap. So you might want to do something like that. It depends on you. We'll figure that out later. For now, I'm going to stop this video. In the next video, the thing we have to figure out is on every chapter, we're going to have to do a page break so that the next chapter starts on a new page. And also, the chapter titles like this, they should start on the right-hand side, and they shouldn't have a header or a footer, which means we're going to have to set up a page style that is different from the normal right and left page styles and also doesn't have a header or footer. And then we'll have to figure out the style for the heading and the footer for all the other pages that are normal and go back and forth. Um, so I'll stop this video here, but please watch the next video, which continues this process.